So the next thing we need to make sure that we've got working right is understanding what page size that we're going to use then. Now we've got a wireframe, but a wireframe is just simply a fixed width on our page. So the next thing we need to understand or need to decide is the size of our page. So let's take a look at another file. Let's go to File and Open again. And back in Chapter 2, we have a file called Measurements. So, so far we've taken a look at making a flowchart. We've also taken a look at our wireframe and a different way of wireframing. And of course we could always use Dreamweaver to wireframe as well. Now we need to understand our browser size. What does the client want? How much content do they have versus what the audience actually needs from that particular website? First off, when we target a browser, we need to decide whether it's going to be 1024 by 768, 1280, 800 by 600. Who is using that particular website? What is the need? What content is there, etc.? Inside of Dreamweaver as a designer, we also need to make sure that we are taking the browser parts into consideration, the navigation, the status bar, etc. So if we're going to target, for instance, a 1024 by 768 for our width, we need to make sure that we have a viewable area of at least 955 or 960. I have 960 down simply because it's a divisible number. If you'd like to take a look at more frameworks, 960.js is just one example of a framework. So next thing is page sizing. There are several different things that we can do for page sizing. So for instance, we have liquid. Liquid is a percentage based sizing. So for instance, if I have in my CSS, say that I've got my width for my page to be 80%, then when the client, when the end user pulls out their browser, then my text will rewrap. All of my content is going to rewrap to fit the width of where they've pulled the browser out to. So I need to make sure that that is something that I have planned for in how my page is laid out. My next page sizing is elastic. That's also M-based. Now we haven't talked about exactly what all the different types of measurements are just yet, when we will in just a second, but basically it looks like a fixed width until they either do a Command Plus on a Mac or a Control Plus on a PC, which will increase the text size in their page. If this is also the size of my layout of my file, then the sizing for the layout will also increase when they do that as well and not just the text. The next thing on my page is fixed and I need to scroll down just a little bit to be able to see that. So fixed is an absolute measurement. So it's also a pixel based measurement. It's not relative and it doesn't cascade, meaning that when I do a control plus or a command plus, the sizing for that won't increase as well as the text, just the text. So that's going to totally rewrap inside of my page and I need to make sure that that's what I'm expecting. Will the client be maybe a little bit older and need to do a control plus or a command plus to be able to see the text? I need to make sure of those things before I decide on a sizing. Hybrid is next. A hybrid is a unique combination of both percentage and M-based. So for instance, I might have a navigation on the left or the right hand side and that might be M-based. The rest of my page might be percentage-based. So if the end user takes the browser and stretches it on the page, most of my page, the content, will stretch and rewrap while the navigation will stay put unless they do a command or a control plus. Now let's discuss actual measurement values. Again, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit farther on my page so I can see. So we've got our percentage base. Really excellent for specifying relative sizing. Inches, centimeters, and millimeters are measurements that we could use, but we really don't for the most part in web design. M's. Now let's talk about M's. An M measurement is something that we use all the time in CSS. So we need to understand it completely. 1M is equal to the current font size. So what the heck does that mean? That means that the end user in their browser, that's the default size. 
Most people don't know how to change that, so it is typically 16 pixels for the size that we have as a default. So if we have 1M equals the current font size, then that will be 16 pixels. But let's say we had just 12, so 12 points, then if 2Ms, is then going to be 24 points. It's a very useful measurement, but we need to make sure that we're defining everything properly first, and we will explain that in just a little bit. An X is also a measurement that we can use inside of CSS, and one X is the X height of a font. It's usually about half the font size. Well, that's a measurement that really I would have to do the math with. So unless you're really great at math, that's not one that we typically use because it's not easy to figure that out and how to then use all of our measurements after that. The next one is points. Well, points is basically the same sort of measurement as a pixel, except for that's not something that we typically use with the browser. The browser is pixel-based, so if we use a point, that doesn't really match up all that well. So even though you can use it, we don't typically use it. Same thing with pikas. Pika is a great measurement if you're laying out a magazine, but not necessarily a website. Pixels is a measurement that we actually use on the screen. It's dots on the computer screen. So that's a very important word that we are talking about. Pixels measure resolution. Let's scroll down just a little bit farther. So our tip is basically the M size that we use inside of Dreamweaver when we set up our CSS is typically set to 62.5%. So you might wonder why we're using a percentage there and then we're going to use M's as a base for our measurement for our fonts for the rest of our page. Because browsers aren't all made exactly the same, I need to make sure that both Mac and PC and all the browsers are seeing just about basically the same size of font. So if I use a percentage based in my body to define the size for my font and then use an M in the rest of my page, most of the browsers and both the Mac and the PC will typically behave a little bit better in seeing the right size. So using my 62.5%, because the default browser is 16 pixels as, you know, typically it's 16 pixels, then this makes it basically 10 pixels. Now, 10 pixels is a whole lot easier to work with than trying to figure out the math of what their default browser is and what size that I actually want my fonts to be on my page. This really works more with just fonts. It works with all of my measurements in using M's. So I can use N as a multiplier in that way. So if I want a 12-pixel font, then I just do 1.2 M, and it's a whole lot easier to figure out. Now certainly that's just one example and one way that we'll be using, just like everything else in the web and design, there are multiple ways to do everything. One thing you need to also remember is that M's, percentages, and X's are all relative length measures. So relative sizing equals cascade. We'll explain more about cascade in just a little bit. But it's a word that you need to make sure and remember at this point. Cascade is part of the cascading style sheets. So we also need to remember that IE, old IE, IE6, for instance, if you're still targeting IE6 at this point, and I'm sorry if you are, you need to make sure that if you're using pixels, that it doesn't resize. So it's not a relative size like an M. So for instance, if they do a control plus, on a PC using IE6, my text will not get larger. So that's something that we need to keep in mind.